Connecting to Life presents Ask for the Moon, a workshop with Joran Mossenson, Ireland, March 2019. Marshall would call the, the first question in NVC, which is, what's alive in you? What's alive in you? you know, what, what your actual authenticity is trying to say now? Mm -hmm. so, or in other words, what, what feelings are living in your body? And even deeper, actually, what is it? <coughs> what is your longing? What is the need that is trying to speak through you now? Whenever, whatever people do, whenever someone opens their, their mouth, they have a need. Whatever, as I said yesterday, need is the motivation behind the action. Whenever people open their mouth or do things, they actually try to take care of beautiful life qualities that we all long for. Like needs is, a, is the deepest place that I found as to what motivates people. What is it that they really want? in each given situation. <coughs> and when I know what is my need, then I don't want to stay there. Because needs are abstract. I want to, when, when I connect with the essence of my longing, I want to actually manifest it. And there comes the second question in NVC. Like, okay, if, if you have this need, then what would make your life more wonderful? Yeah. What do you want back from the other person now? Say your dream. Like ask for the moon and there is no limit there is no limit for requests request is really the power that creates in the world and what I notice is very often when people speak actually they don't they don't say what they want and even if you know very often people, when, when I'm not clear, people tell me, so tell me your feelings. Tell me what you feel. But actually feeling is very little information. So just feel, feel how it feels if I finish my sentence with just telling you my feelings. Imagine that you are my girlfriend and we are in a party with your friends. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, hey, my dear girlfriend, you know, being here in the party with your friends, I feel very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Very, very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> What's going on in you if, uh, if I finish my sentence there? Guilt. Guilt. Like immediately, what, what uh, did I do wrong? Yeah. What else? What did you do? <laughs> What to do? Immediately, I give you a job to do. Like, <coughs> shit, what to do, 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 what to do. Like, I give you the responsibility to, to solve my problem. Mm -hmm. uh, any other? Anyone Why? feels also... Pr what? Why? 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 Yeah. You want to understand more. Mm 
you want more information. Mm -hmm. So actually feeling is very little information. You know, and then I learn then I learn about need. That actually feelings is just how my body is telling me I have a need. But if I finish my sentence with an abstract need, it also creates something quite similar. You know, if I will tell you, you know, my dear girlfriend, I, you know, being here in the party with your friend, I feel very uncomfortable because I really want to take part and belong. Oh, I didn't leave you out. I, I really want to belong. I really want to be belong. <laughs> Belong. Don't you belong? No. <laughs> what can I do for you? <laughs> do you need a hug? <laughs> 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 then start a guessing game. Mm -hmm. Do you know this phenomenon of unwanted advices? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it's very often it's because if you don't say what you want, people immediately, because people really care, mm -hmm. but they care out of pressure. It's not a fun care. <coughs> like, shit, what to do? We have to solve your problem now. So whenever I open my mouth, or whenever someone opens their mouth, I want to say my need and my request. To be very clear, to offer people what is it that I actually want? No. What do I want back now? What would be my dream? You know, if we don't play small, what would be my dream? <coughs> so tell me, how, how does that feel if I tell you, you know, my dear girlfriend, being here in the party with your friend, I feel uncomfortable because I really want to take part and belong. I really would like to hold your hand and then to meet the people you meet. That will help me to, to slowly find my place. Would that work for you? How does that feel if, if I finish my sentence in this way? Right. The solution is there. Mm -hmm. Start. <laughs> yeah. so some kind of relief of, okay, I know what to do. Yeah. Some clarity. Mm -hmm. Any other reaction? Joy. Say again? Joy. 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 Request is actually to give opportunity for people to contribute to my well-being, mm -hmm. the joy of contribution. Yeah. Any other different reactions? What, what, if, what, if the yeah. what if the girl can say, oh, well, yeah, uh, you know, why yeah. should I just hold your hands? Like, no way, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and here, okay. here comes the, the challenge. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Any anyone who's already feeling pressure? You, you said, yeah. Is it because you don't know if if you can say yes and no? I always do the job either not at all or fully. So I feel like I take them literally care of you. Okay, I'm holding your hand, yeah. and I'll be checking constantly if you're okay. Yeah. But that's my stuff. So there is immediately kind of pressure of have to. Shit, from now on I have to take care of him. That's my kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Even if I speak perfect giraffe, the ears of others might still have jackal ears. Jackal ears means like they hear it as a judgment or a have to. Yeah. This is also, who said guilt? You said guilt. Yeah. It means she wears her jackal ears. She already hears shit, I did something wrong. Exactly what I think. Yeah. Why did I bring you here? You probably didn't want to come here in the first oh. place, and I made you come here, and it was like, ooh. Yeah. So that I find it very helpful to be aware that even if I speak, you know, perfect, I'm just describing my feeling, my need, my request. I'm completely open for a no. But people, you know, for eight thousand years, they are used to to hear judgment, blames, demands. So. She already, she already imagined all that. Mm. So when you, whenever, even if you speak perfect giraffe, people are still listening to you with your jackal ears. 
And here, for me, this is really the most crucial moment in communication. After saying my request, is it a request or is it a demand? <coughs> no, am I really open for a no? And that's a very challenging moment, and this is what I would like to spend a big part of the day today. Just about this moment, the moment of no. <coughs> there is so much going on around that moment. <coughs> so maybe first I, I will say it, and please tell me if you hear it as a request or as a demand. Yeah, so my dear girlfriend, been in the party, uncomfortable, I really want to belong and take part. I really would like to hold your hand and meet the people you meet. Would that work for you? Do you hear it as a request or as a demand? What's the difference? Hello. Say again? What's the difference? The difference, do you feel any pressure? No, I mean, what's the difference between request and demands? Yeah, that if you feel any pressure that you have to. That like demand is, demand is like I'm demanding you to do that. You have to do that. Uh, okay, request has option to say no. Yeah. Are you willing to? Yeah. So do you hear what I said as a request or as a demand? Request. Request? request? You hear it as a request? Okay. Now, I would say... The what? You guys still hear it as a demand. Yeah. Because if, you, if I don't do it, I'm still, still going to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. I still feel a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. You saying to me, I would like to hold your hand. Is that okay with you? I feel like saying to you, if you want to go home, you can go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so am I, am I really open for a no? You're not really open for a no. So she already is sure that I'm not open for a no. <laughs> And I would say, I would say, I don't know yet. It's re the difference between request and a demand is not about the text. It's not how I say it. It's about what I'm holding inside of me. Am I really open for a no? Or am I sneakily, you know, I can speak perfect giraffe. It's like, would you be willing? Is it joyful for you? <laughs> <laughs> but the test, if it's a real request or a sneaky demand, is when she say no. And the way how I will react will reveal to you if it was a real request or a sneaky demand. Let, let's test it, okay? <laughs> yes, I uh, uncomfortable, belong. I really would like to hold your hand and mm -hmm. to meet the people you meet. Would that work for you? Um, well, I don't want to hold your hand. What do you mean? Okay. <laughs> no, it's really okay. You're free. You're free. <laughs> but you know when, when, when I will invite you with my friend, let's see how you feel, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, fine. Okay, fine. You know, sometimes I, wor I wonder really, why you don't just get married with your friend? <laughs> I think it's a very good idea. Right. Our marriage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So was it a real request or was it a sneaky demand? <laughs> yeah. So I want to be very clear. The difference between request and demand is not about how I say it. It's about am I really open for a no? And that's very challenging. There is a lot going on when I hear a no. So I would like to start, to start to look into all what is going on when there is a no, and how, how to continue the dialogue from there. You know, no, no sounds like as if it's the end of the dialogue, no? Like, hey, can I hold your hand? No. Okay, I go home. It sounds as if it's the end of the dialogue. But for me, say again? And what is it that? The, the request or the no? No, the request. When you ask for holding your hands, it's like you're, you're talking to Ralph, but there's deep, yes. it's coming deep from the jacket, yeah. trying to meet your needs without consideration. Yeah. Like I say, would you be willing, but actually inside of me, what I'm holding, you are my wife, you should do that. That's normal. Yeah. I'm holding a jackal underneath. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I'm trying to actually say, I was, when I 
that your 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 hoover being your own rights can you not stand on your own two feet. That's only fault to my mother. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then she judged me. Yeah, I introduced you to my friend, but I don't need to hold your hand. Yeah. You're so mad, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, then she judged me back of like, come on, grow up. <laughs> Don't be childish. Then we can start to play this ping pong of I judge you, you judge me, I judge you, what's wrong with you, what's wrong with you. It's a fun game to play. <laughs> Very painful game to play. <coughs> Maybe first to look into <coughs> what happened in me when I hear a no. For example, if I, you know, if I will tell her, hey, Cassia, I really like you. Shall we go to drink coffee together? And she will say no. What do you think is going on? What do you imagine is going on in me when I hear a no? Rejection. I'm not good enough. She doesn't like me. Yeah. Rejection. <laughs> Starting to remember. remember all the other times other people also didn't want to go to coffee with me. Like this is just like yeah. all the other times too. Kind of like yeah, nobody really enjoyed to be with me. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Something is wrong. Because it boils down that you take it personally. Yeah. Yeah, but how? <laughs> <laughs> so I, d I just want to kind of really become aware of something that is going on in the speed of light. That whenever I hear a no, the thing about no, would you be willing to open it for me? If you will say no, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a handicap. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so you want me to destroy my teeth for that? Yeah. You care about your comfort more than about my teeth. You see, all these stories are happening in the speed of light. So the thing about no is that no doesn't describe what is, it describes what isn't. You know, would you be willing to hold my hand? No. It doesn't describe what I want, it describes what I don't want. Is that clear so far? <laughs> so for example, if I will ask you, would you like to go to the park with me? And you will say no. You say that you don't want to go to the park, but you don't say what you want. So in other words, like when he say what he doesn't want, I don't know what he wants. We, or in other words, it leaves me a lot of space to imagine. <coughs> no, no is a little bit like a black hole. It doesn't describe what is. And brains are very, very oriented to be in reality. I want to be in reality. I want to know that what is going on. And when people don't describe me what's going on, then I start to imagine. And when you give brains the opportunity to imagine, they imagine worst case scenarios. The brain is kind of busy protecting us. So we, in the speed of light, without even choice, first I imagine the worst case scenario. You see, it's like, I say no, Pwah! I'm not good enough, he doesn't love me, it's not fun to be with me. Worst case scenarios. This is what I would call rejection. Rejection actually does not exist in nature. No human being can reject another. Rejection is a story we tell ourselves in the speed of light when we hear a no. So no, poof, it's, it's really in the speed of light. It's faster than my 
awareness, rejection story. And that's not, not fun to live in imagination land. Imagination land is a very painful place to be. Reality is, is much more safe than imagination. I don't know if you know Byron Katie, the work of Byron Katie. That she's very <laughs> tuned into that, that. Actually, reality is compassion. Reality is safe. All the pain, the suffering, is coming from imagination, from when I'm fighting with reality. Reality is compassion. Reality is love. <coughs> you and now you, you keep it for yourself. You think it's yours? <laughs> Cooperation. Oh yeah. Wow, thank you. So, <coughs> so then I want to get more clarity what you... <laughs> <laughs> Do you have resources? The what? You are resourceful. You have you, you are resourceful. Resourceful? Yeah. With support, you mean? Yeah, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I want some clarity that whenever people tell me no, what no really is. So my understanding is that no is actually it's not a no. No is a jackal word. It doesn't describe life. I want to know life. I want to be in life. Actually no. No is a yes. Every time somebody say no to you, they actually say yes to something. And even more concretely, it's no is a yes to a need. To whose needs? To the person saying no or the other person? To the person who says no. So basically when somebody say no to me, they say, Yoram, I'm worried that if I will do what you ask me to do, I will a certain need of mine will not be taken into consideration. And I want this need to be included. So actually, no is a cry for inclusion. It's one more need is wanting to be included into the, to be on the table as to what we want to care for. And this is why it's actually, whenever there is a no for me, it's like, oh, it's an opportunity for the most meaningful dialogue on the planet as to how to care for everyone's needs. So let's, let's, let's just start to play it. So yeah, so would I would really like to hold your hand and meet the people that you meet. Would that work for you? No. Yeah. So when she say no, you know, I just notice boof all my rejection stories. Watch up, walk up. And I can breathe. Okay, probably she actually she's worried that if she will do what I ask her a certain need of her will not be taken care of. And she is crying for this need to be included. So first I want to be, become aware of what is this need. So then I go to, to listening empathically. You know, just like we practiced yesterday, that you remember every judgment is a tragic expression of a beautiful need. Every no is a tragic expression of a beautiful need. So I want to start to guess. What could be the need she, she, she wants to be included? What is a yes behind her no? So is it, does it feel uncomfortable for you to do it in front of your friends? It kind of like, oh, I'm taking care of this baby? Is it something like that? Mm, yeah. So is it a, almost like shameful, kind of like, hello, I brought my baby with me? <laughs> Yeah, so is it that you want to feel comfortable around your friends and not to be judged by them? I also want to have time to talk to my own friends. Yeah. I don't, don't want necessarily want you beside me all the time. Yeah. I want to be able to talk to my own friends as well. 
that's why I want you to mingle with other people. Mm. I don't want you stuck to my side for the night. <laughs> the what? I don't want you stuck to my side for the night. Yeah. And every message she gives me, I can so easily go into all my, all my judgments about her. Okay. All the night by my side, what? I didn't ask for this. Like, you're so selfish, you just think about yourself. Da, 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 da. But no, I'm really focused on, okay, all what she say, all these judgments that's coming from her is all expression of a beautiful need of her. And I want, the, the place where I can fall in love with her is, you know, this, I'm a sweetheart hunter. You know, all these words, people use and behave in all sorts of weird ways that I, very hard to like and love. But there is a place where I can love them. It's when I'm really hearing the beautiful need that tries to speak through them. Like the place that I can resonate with. So yeah, so is it, you want to be free. It's special for you to meet your friends. And you really want to meet them. And not to, to put yourself in places that you don't want to be. You want to really be free and to choose to celebrate your connection with your friends. Is that? Yeah, my safe. Yeah, you want a space to choose what you feel like doing. How, how do you feel when you don't have space to feel like doing what you want to do? Trapped. Trapped. Kind of. Freedom is a very beautiful human need we all long for. You know, to stay connected with our spirituality, you know, other than instead of acting out of should and have to, to actually listen to our bodies. Our body has a lot of intelligence. And, and you need the space to actually do what you are moved to do. Is that? Can, can, can you be touched by that? that she, she, she's actually saying, when she say no, she said, Yoram, I'm worried that I will fall into have to, and then I will suffer the whole evening. I want to enjoy the evening. I don't want to victimize myself and to put myself aside. I want to celebrate life. Can you be touched by that? Yeah, so, so what she does is she just wants to bring that to also to the table. I, I really want you to be free. And then we, and then we hold two beautiful needs. And then I think you were, Eddie, you were saying yesterday the, the kind of the pain of conflicting needs. Yeah. And actually, in my understanding, needs can never conflict. Needs, because needs are abstract. See, to imagine, you know, take two abstract things and try to collide them. It's like two clouds. Take two clouds and try to smash them into each other. It's not possible. Needs can never be conflicted. The strategies that we already imagine are conflicted. All conflict on the planet are between the strategies, not between the needs. You know, like it clash on, I want you to hold my hand, and she don't want to hold my hand. But, but feel for a moment, like th this is an or-or. Yeah, it's like, or, or you hold my hand, and you kill yourself, or you don't hold my hand, and then I cannot belong. It's an or-or. Or or is a very painful place to be. Or or means or you will die or I will die. Great life. <laughs> so who will die today? <laughs> I don't want anyone to die. Life is much more beautiful than that. So I want to move to the end end. And the end end is really in the, pl in the place of the abstract need, the pure need. Can you be touched that she wants to be free? Do you know? Who will she become if she will not be free with me? How she will become if, she's, if she will hold my hand the rest of the evening? Bitter. Yeah. How much fun it is to have a bitter girlfriend. How much it will support me to belong the rest of the evening. You get that? It's actually when I really get to the need, it's, it's become her need is part of my well-being. Say again? Neither of us will really grow. Yeah. We will just push ourselves down, both of us, and we will just enter into this fairness suffering game. Who? <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Yeah. Or, or, whenever, whenever you play the game of or, or, we start to, to take life away. So it's kind of uh, the bomb of creativity. Whenever I know people's need, images will start to come to us effortlessly. Request is effortless. It's not to think shit what to do. <laughs> what to request now? <gasps> well, I don't know. Uh, request is effortless. It's just when I know needs, I'm just like, is there any image that comes to me effortlessly? And then comes an image. And request is just to, to be generous in sharing your images. And as a new request. So I'm just saying, I just, and I'm completely open for a no for that as well. Yeah, so would, would that work for you if, you know, you, you introduce me to Josie? Because I, I have a sense there could be a click with Josie. And, and then after we will see how we feel. Would that work for you? Yes, yeah? Mm -hmm. Cool. And then we start something. And then I just notice, I feel worried now. Because it can be that I will not click with Josie. Mm -hmm. What will happen then? <laughs> problem, problem, problem. <laughs> I feel worried. And I really want it to be safe for both of us. So would, would that work for you if, if I don't find my place? Because I really want it to be free. If I, will feel if I have the freedom myself to go home. Mm -hmm. If I'm not finding my place. Would that work for you? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And in this way, we just continue until we really find something that truly works for everyone. That there is no compromise. Compromise is, it's kind of to say, compromise is to say, okay, I will kill myself a little bit for you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Compromises, I find compromise is a very sad place to be. Life is much more beautiful than that. Compromise is a little bit like, you know, like a, when you take a glass and you put uh, drops of water. Each time you compromise, you put a drop of water. What will happen after a while? Yeah. Do you know this moment when you're kind of, you give in a little bit, then you give in a little bit more, then you give in a little bit more, and suddenly, <laughs> You know this moment that you kind of explode and you don't know why? Yeah. <laughs> Very often for me it's, it's that I accumulated quite some giving in, or what we call half yeses. Each time you do something with the energy of half yes, you accumulate some hatred. <laughs> I'm very happy you're very resourceful, but if you would like to <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I enjoy our game. <laughs> How many times a day you do things with the energy of half yes? Kind of Shall we go to my parents? Uh, Sure. Mm. It, uh, yeah, of course, it's normal. I'm your husband, so it's, yeah, of course. Last weekend we went to my parents, so yeah. This <laughs> weekend we will go to your parents, sure. Can you wash the dishes? Sh sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you play with our child? Can you take care of him for an hour? Yeah, of course. How many times a day you do things with the energy of half yes? Is anyone has uh, the thought of, yeah, we, we have sometimes conflicting needs? Do you have this thought? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do anyone has an example of conflicting needs? Yeah. And maybe yeah. just before saying it, would you be willing to close your ears for a sec? And I will say something to them that I want you not to hear. <laughs> 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 so my guess is that what you're going to say are actually strategies. And, and <coughs> even if he will say it in language of needs, there is a specific imagination in his brain already about what the strategies ar around these needs. And this is where it clashes. Touching. 
Yeah, so you have an example of conflicting needs? Uh, yeah, um, so we are like living together for the last one and a half years and we both want space in the house and also we want to respect each other uh, and respect each other's rhythms um, but it's a bit difficult because like for example um, who is doing more house stuff like uh, she is more into like not into but she's giving more time to the house works and I'm like I'm the lazy one kind of uh, but I uh, I want my space and she wants her space so we cannot kind of find a common ground to uh, meet mm. yeah. 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 do you have one example of, of when is it clashing uh, dishes <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's like, for example, she would like you to clean now. Yeah, but and, and I, yeah, I don't want to. I don't. I really don't want to clean it now. Uh, actually, I have a better example. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, uh, can I? Yeah. <laughs> You're with 40 of your closest friends. <laughs> <laughs> so today, I like we are staying. We are gonna be staying somewhere near the area, and I was I was looking for plastic bags to cover my shampoo, um, but I I just got scared to ask where where are the plastic bags because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I ask and like. Um, she reacts in a way that I have to know where is the plastic bag, uh, yeah. and like this, for example, is a is a good example of uh, like different different needs and. So, is it that? So what? <coughs> you are afraid to ask for a plastic bag because you are afraid she will be angry. Yeah. 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 And so, so these are like. Um, that's strategy. Like I'm, you know, I want to ask for the plastic bag, and I'm afraid to ask for the plastic bag because I'm afraid she will be angry. Yeah. That's where the clash is. Then I, then comes the question: Should I ask or should I not ask? Mm -hmm. And that's a clash, which is strategy. Strategy: Should I ask or should I not ask? And really, let's really just hold the needs. So is it like you really would like to feel free to ask? Yeah. Mm. Can you see the beauty of that? And let's imagine she gets angry. If she gets angry, it's because something is really beautiful in her. <laughs> <laughs> Anger is one of my favorite emotions. It means it's like mama bear who is there to protect needs. Yeah. Do you have a guess? Why, why is it she, she gets angry? Because she wants me to own the house as much as she does. Mm -hmm. Really slow down. She wants me to own the house. You uh, say? Yeah, like yeah, own the house. Yeah. Take ownership. Yeah. yeah. And why? Why do you think she wants you to take ownership of the house? What is in her? Um, When I hear, when I hear, oh, she wants me to take ownership, it's hard for me to feel compassion. It's more like pressure. Mm -hmm. And I want to get to the place where I can, oh, sweetheart. Yeah. So why, why do you imagine she won? Yeah, she I think she, um, she wants me to respect her space in the core. Because if I, if I don't take ownership in the house, uh, she end up spending more time to the house, also for me, yeah. which kind of steals away from her space that she can invest in different areas. Yes. Yeah, so is it like you imagine that she she wants to choose where she puts her energy? Yeah, exactly. And just with this exactly, just notice that when he said, he said she <coughs> wants me to, ta -ta 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 -ta. and I took him out of the need. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, you really want to, to choose how you use your time and energy? Shall we check it with her? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's like you want to be free mm -hmm. to choose how you use your time and energy. Can you see the beauty of that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we sit with two beauties. So you said, yeah, like you want him to feel free to ask. Yeah, yeah. of course, yeah. yeah. And you really want her to, to really choose yeah. where she puts her. Yeah. So n now we are for a moment sitting in the end end. Yeah. Where, where do you feel any clash at this moment? Mm. And then just just notice if there is any and each moment will be different. It's not to solve it for the rest of our life. It's just just now. There are dishes in the sink. <laughs> yeah, there are dishes in the sink. Yeah. She really would love you to she would love you to do it and not at the cost of you starting to feel uncomfortable in the house. I'm not willing that you do it with the energy of you starting to lose being comfortable in the house. Uh, yeah, so you want you want to really use your energy for something else? Yeah, yeah. For what? Uh, for probably finish up my other work, <laughs> oh. like finish doing some designs and relieve other like to do. Um, like the, the list in my head, so yeah. just like have a lot more space in my in my head. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I really want to, you know, I have some tension in me. All these things that are not done, mm -hmm. and I really want it to get done so I can have some space. How is that for you to hear? Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. I'm ready to like help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, move to help? Yeah, I move to help. Mm. Would you enjoy to clean the dishes? Sure. Yeah? <laughs> 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 is it a <the> house? <laughs> are, are you moved to it? Or is it by guilt or shame? or? No, it's not, it's not by guilt or shame. No. Yeah. no. Is it kind of it's, yeah, actually I hearing? Why? Yeah, but it's I mean understand the deeper, uh, like underlying reasons of a couple actions. I think it's more easier to convince people, or also convince yourself to do some sort of actions. Yeah, like to motivate. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's weird, no? Like he didn't want to do it, and now he wants to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find it magical. Mm -hmm. I really don't want him to give me out of a have-to energy. Mm -hmm. But now there is no payment. Now he is moved by himself to do it. Thank you. I felt like... Um like I was, like I think we were a bit stuck in uh, ego level that we were thinking that uh, my space is more important than your space and vice versa uh, and kind of uh, the ego is kind of blocking to take these actions because it's constantly fighting but when, when I understand the deeper needs um, like when kind of she removes these filters of ego and like change her wording accordingly and like really speaking from within from the heart and then i think it kind of melts my ego as well <laughs> and when my ego melts i'm i'm more connected So I think that uh, cooperation is, is very important and in a lot of relationships it does, there is compromise on both sides. Like you said, for example, I went to my parents last week. I know that's, that's important to me so, and I know it's important to you to visit your parents so we'll go there even though it's not my favourite thing to do. Yeah. Um, how would you communicate <coughs> that? Because like, 
I, I think compromise is still very, very important. Mm. Yeah. So I really want to care for you. I know it's important for you. I'm, I'm, I'm not enjoying it, but still I'm moved because I know how it nourishes you. And it nourishes me when I see you nourished. Mm -hmm. So I move to come. There is a willingness in me. Yes. Am I speaking to what you are saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, the most important part of it is a choice. Am I slightly actually a victim? Or am I choosing because I see how it nourishes me? It's not that everything in life that I do I, is joyful. For example, I'm, I'm answering many more emails a day than what I enjoy. But I'm absolutely choosing it because I know what it serves for me to do that. So it's kind of the principle of willingness. Like I'm willing to, no to do it because I'm very connected to what it contributes to myself to do it. Thank you. Yeah? Uh, how do you know for sure that a yes for you to go home is not a half yes? Yeah, very dangerous zone. Sometimes I realize it a few weeks after. Hmm. <laughs> 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 you know, like the darkness alone and you don't care about the sea. Yeah. Yeah. And then a few weeks few weeks later she will tell me, and then you left me there completely in the dark. You don't care about it, you're just so selfish. Ah, so it was a half yes three weeks ago. Thank you for letting me know. Oh, I'm very sad to know that now. Yeah. I cannot express how much damage is happening in relationships out of those half yeses. I'm overwhelmed by it. Also by m in myself, I, I, I'm not free of it at all. I'm, you know, I'm obsessed with that, you know, of learning how to take care of my need because I see that when I don't take care of my need, I become a monster to others. And I'm still, I have a lot to learn <laughs> about it. I'm still doing things I later I realize that was a half yes and we paid for it both. Is the, um, is the full yes, yes, always possible? Or are there times when the best you can do is half yes, half yes? Out of, because we don't have enough time to dialogue? Yeah, often that, or, you know, it's that we're never going to get to the, the full yes, yes. So I'm just curious, is if you have the time, is the full yes, yes, always possible? Yeah. For me, it's a lot a question of time, because I know that I have the skills mm -hmm. to arrive to a full yes, but it does ask time, and sometimes I don't have the time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. compromise is a shortcut. But if you have the time, you believe is that the full yes, yes is all possible? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just to really give you an example, Nadine, is that okay if I share about the baby? Yeah? So, like with Nadine, we, uh, we had uh, in the autumn a big conflict, a very profound conflict on the level of strategy. That Nadine wants a baby, and I don't want a baby. Now, it's very risky to make a half-yes decision about <laughs> such a subject. <laughs> you see? <laughs> the what? You never want to be a little bit pregnant, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit? You're not, you're not going to be a little bit pregnant. Yeah. A little bit pregnant. <laughs> 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 I have expected your baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I have this experience of being born to a father who gave a half yes. And I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. <laughs> so that started a very meaningful dialogue. And we are still in the middle of it. It's not over. But I'm so amazed actually by all what we discover on the way on this dialogue. And at this moment, actually, we, we figure out also a, a kind of a new strategy that we never imagined before. That suddenly it works for both. At this moment, it's not complete. But I find it a very exciting journey where none of us, I don't want her to give in. 
you know what will happen if she will give in. Yeah. And she doesn't want me to give in. So it's, thank you. Just, just notice if actually there are any requests that you are somehow censoring. And especially, you know, ask, 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 and be super open for a no. The more I'm, the more I'm really open for a no, the more I can ask. One of the things that I really hate is that when people ask me something, and then I say no, and then I pay for it. You know, they, they are angry with me, or, you know, like, Yoram, uh, shall we, you know, shall we go to drink coffee together? Uh, no, because I'm busy with something. Yeah, you never, you never want to drink coffee with me. Then please don't ask me. If I need to pay for it after, <laughs> then please don't ask me. Ask me. For me to ask is first I want to check, am I really open for a no? That's the difference between a gift and a burden. The request is to give my needs as a gift rather than as a burden. Culturally, it's so, there is so much around, you know, to ask is like a burden. You know, can I sleep in your house for a month? There is already kind of, you feel the atmosphere immediately, kind of, uh-oh. <laughs> well, actually, I want to give it as a gift because who knows, maybe actually she is longing for more community in her life. <laughs> yeah. So it's, so, it's so sad to hold back my requests. You know, that life is an abundance of opportunities how to meet needs, mine and <coughs> others. So I want... Marshall, he used to do, he, he said, kind of, you know, to look at your need as a Father Christmas. Kind of like, ho, 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 I have a need, I want to give it to you as a gift. But really the key in it is, am I, <laughs> am I really open for a no? So ask, 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 or ask for the moon. And you know, there was a guy, I was teaching it in Israel two years ago, and and the day after, he came back and he said, Wow, Yoram, now I really get what you mean. I said, what, what happened? He said, Yeah, yesterday after the workshop, I went for a part to a party. And there I entered the room. And at the bar, there were two women sitting. And then I noticed the image that came to my head. And you said, Ask for the moon. <laughs> So I went to them and I said, hello, nice to meet you. I would really love to sleep with both of you tonight. <laughs> and then we asked him, and, and then what happened? <laughs> and he said, yeah, they said no. <laughs> but we had the most meaningful dialogue the whole, the whole night long. So a request is just a beginning of a dialogue. I'm not at all attached for a yes. It's a beginning of, of traveling into the unknown together, as long as I'm open for a no. And so often we are holding our request back. So often. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> so asking is a power that creates. If you don't ask, nothing will happen. And for example, this is how I created my NVC business. At the beginning, I was just, you know, giving free introductions. And at the end of the introduction, I will always say, you know, this is what I love to do, and I need help. Is there anyone who would enjoy to organize such an evening for your friends or your family or colleagues? Just, just this. I didn't do any marketing, anything. Just the power of request. In that way, I started to travel around Europe giving introductions in people's living rooms. So asking, 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 asking. What? That gives you an idea? I'm totally loving 
Bitcoin. Yeah, I'm coming to your boss and say, hey, I would really enjoy to double my salary. <laughs> would you enjoy that as well? <laughs> yeah, as long as you're really open for a no. No, just notice your needs and your images. And allow yourself to make wild requests. You know, I remember, for example, when I was once, quite a long time ago, I was practicing how to teach requests. And then I was, while doing it, I was in a train station. And I was waiting for my train, kind of being bored. And then 50 meters away from me, there was a group of young people sitting on the floor with guitar and playing songs and having fun. And inside of me, I was already like, oh, no. Like, I know, I know my dream. But, oh, no. And then I said, oh, yes. <laughs> so then I went to them and I say, hey, it looks like you are really having fun. Can I join? And then they look, you know this, when people look at you like this, like... <laughs> <laughs> and then they say, sure. And then I sat with them. We were having a lot of fun for 10 minutes. And then my train came and I left. I said, Chad, thank you. <laughs> and it really made me realize, my God, how many opportunities are all the time available, all the time for having fun, meaningful fun. And I'm just, because I'm not asking, <coughs> nothing happens. The world is an abundance of opportunities how to meet needs. It's so rich. It's so rich. It's all the time, everywhere. I remember I had a friend. He was uh, frustrated sexually with his partner. Like he wanted much more sex than she wanted. And especially, actually, behind sex, it was about warmth. And then he find himself, uh, every day, every morning, he would go with a bus to his work. And he find really being connected to his need for warmth he was sitting in the bus near people and actually receiving warmth. <laughs> and he was really, that's nourishing. You know, very often the brain is what I call momentary lack of creativity. When I'm attached to, no, I, I need to make sex with my wife. But actually, there are, when I know what really my need is, the world becomes an abundance of opportunities how to meet needs. What I would like to start to move into is how to make powerful requests that are actually moving things forward. Because also when people make requests, very often <coughs> what comes of, out of their mouth is not easily moving things forward. For example, if I will ask you, uh, can you be more considerate? How your heart react to that? Vague, yeah. Judgment. Yeah, it sounds like a judgment. So yeah. So let's so let's slow down and I, I want to share some principles. Oh I I read choice. Also she didn't look so I I'm free. A few principles as to how to make powerful requests that move things forward. The first one goes like that. Call it need request. It's to remember to say your need before your request. You just feel the difference. Imagine that I'm your teenager's son. And I say to you, hey, mom, dad, can you give me money? Or if I tell you, hey, mom, dad, all my friends go to the cinema to tonight and I really want to belong to this group. Would you be willing to give me money? Any difference in your heart, how your heart reacts to me? It's very small in sense of awareness, but actually it creates a huge difference in how much people want to cooperate with you. Like first I want to create compassion as to what is a deep human motivation. That creates compassion and a willingness to contribute. If I just say my request, it's much more likely to, to be to, to not to touch the heart of the person. So that, that's really a discipline that I'm working on. I'm still very often I'm, you know, I throw my request and then I regret. Oh, I forgot to say my need before the request. So the second principle, we call it 
So Marshall called it doable, doable request. Make doable request. Doable is different from vague. Sometimes even you can call it measurable, concrete. A doable, a doable is something the other person can do. So for example, when I ask you, can you be more considerate? That's not doable. It's not something concrete that you know how to do. If I would tell you, would you be willing to listen to me now for 10 minutes? Or would you be willing to give me a hug for half a minute? That's something that you can do. It's doable. So for example, uh, can you let me be me? <laughs> Very often I hear people making such requests. <laughs> hey, can you let me be me? It's vague, which means it's, it sounds already, already like a judgment. Mm -hmm. And you feel already pressure because you're supposed to, to guess what concretely to do. Mm -hmm. It gives a lot of work for the other person. So let's, let's first use the first uh, principle. Because actually, when I say, can you let me be me, it can come from many different needs. So first, I want to be sure what is the need. Because when I know the needs, the request will come effortlessly. So what, when I say, can you let me be me, do you have a guess what, what could be my need? Acceptance. Yeah. Any other guess? Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. Acceptance is always a tricky, it's a very <coughs> tricky need. Because it's already very, very oriented to something that the other person is supposed to be, which is undoable. <laughs> But really needs, as I look at need, needs are here, the, the experience of acceptance. What is it, the experience of acceptance? Let's just juice it a little bit. What does it mean, I need acceptance? Belonging. Say again? Belonging. Belonging. Understanding. 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 See, these are more concrete. I can, this one are much more likely to lead me to concrete doable requests. So let, let's take one of them. Which one you would like? Understanding. So I, I have a need of understanding. What concrete doable request I can make? Can you repeat back what you heard me say? Yeah. Can you repeat back what you heard me say? Any other? What? Can you listen to me for 10 minutes? Can you listen to me for 10 minutes? Mm. Yeah. Do you feel any different if I say to you, can you let me be me? Or if I tell you, I, I need to be understood would you be willing to tell me back what you heard me say? And I'm fully open for a no. <coughs> yeah, or what did I say before? Can you be more considerate? What, what could be the need? Care. Care. Yeah, maybe I need care. And really touch it, kind of like, care. I long for care. Mm. I long for this beautiful quality of care. And care for each of us, it will actually lead us to different requests. Mm. What, what can meet your need for care at this moment? Mm. There's concrete doable requests. Uh -huh. yeah. Would you be willing to give me a hug? Make me a cup of tea. Would you be willing to make me a cup of tea? For me, it will be cacao, hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you be willing to make me a warm bath? Let's just just throw. What can what can meet your make for care? Say again. Together watch a, a, a movie. Yeah. Shall we sit together and watch a movie tonight? Mm -hmm. Could you give me some space? Could you give me some space? That's, that's not doable. How, how to give you space? Here, space. <laughs> <laughs> because space is actually a need. I need s space. Could you what give me time on my own? Say again? Instead, could you give me time on my own? How can I give you time on your own? 
H here, time on your own. <laughs> Do you mind Can I have the living room for tonight? Hmm? Can I have the living room for tonight? Yeah, that's doable. Can I have the living room for tonight? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just continue in this. I, I need space. Do you mind if I go for a walk by myself? Yeah. I would really like to go for a walk. Is there any pain in you around it? Yeah. Or if there is any pain in you, can you call one of your friends to deal with it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I say my dream. You see, if I need space, I'm not necessarily available, but I still actually care that you're okay with it. So maybe the last principle for today. And Marshall calls it positive language request. And, and really for clarity, what I mean with positive, it's not the evaluative positive. It's just to like, it's to say what I want instead of saying what I don't want. Negative language request to say what I don't want is a very vicious language. You know, for example, imagine that I tell you, hey guys, uh, hot chocolate? Like, you know, melted chocolate with kind of ice cream? Melted chocolate with ice cream? We don't have. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tropical island? Anyone? Tropical island? Vacation on the beach? We don't have money for it. You know, it's very funny, but actually we do it all day long. You know, to say to children, for example, don't jump on the sofa. Stop running in the house. Stop asking me so many questions. It's very painful. Because actually, we put the image, we give the other person the image of what they most want to do, <laughs> and exactly this, we say, no. So they leave them, it leaves them with nothing. It's the same with teenagers. I would never have said to my daughter, don't do this or don't do that, because then she would want to. <laughs> yes. It's kind of, it's a language that creates resistance. It's like yeah. going in, in my country in, through the airport and having Guinness ahead and saying, <laughs> Guinness, we don't have. <laughs> yeah, so the art is asking for what you want instead of for what you don't want. For example, instead of saying to a child, you know, stop jumping on the sofa. What would be the image that would nourish my need? Jump on the floor. Yeah, would you be willing to jump on the floor? And of course, we're saying the need before. You know, I'm really worried for the sofa. I, really wanna, I want it to be safe. Would you be willing to jump on the floor? Or shall we buy you a trampoline? <laughs> or shall we run outside and jump? And by the way, yeah? Can it also be that you, uh, you, you say, I can see your leaf by jumping up and down on the sofa to have fun as the starting point for that? Yeah. So you acknowledge the need in the child and then, and we can do it from the floor. Yeah. Rather than the, the damage kind of yeah. due to the sofa. Mm -hmm. From the child rather than the adult. <coughs> Yeah, D just, just one little thing, just one little thing is that I want to differentiate, at least inside of me, between need and strategy. Okay. When I say, yeah, I see that you need to jump on, this, on the sofa, that's not a need. In, in, I'm, I'm not speaking about language, but about consciousness. Like the need is, yeah, for example, to put out energy or to have fun or to, to experience my power. Or <laughs> so, yeah, I really see how you enjoy yourself and I want you to enjoy. So... I, the, I'm, is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 And, and really, even just to add to it, is that when I make requests, the more I'm somehow including the possible need of the other into my creativity, the more likely it is to work. See, if I'm only aware of my need, I want to protect the sofa, mm -hmm. I will say to the child, you know, I want to protect the sofa, would you be willing to sit down? 
that's not likely to work because I'm not holding in my awareness his need as well. Just, just holding the awareness of his need will lead me to a new creativity. The focus to her, she will share whatever is happening in her for not more than 30 seconds and then she will shift to me and in this way we so we are both just practicing rad radical honesty as well as the, this art of connection request Can you start? Yeah? Is that okay? <laughs> yes and I like to I like to just take the time you know not to answer out of an instinct but to answer with including the whole of my body. Is that okay for you if I'm just taking one more breath before answering? I'm a bit worried that I lose the enthusiasm that I had about what I wanted to share. And I wonder if hearing that changes anything in you. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I feel excited and there is uh, joy in me and I think it was because I said something and people were laughing and I'm like I have that thought I'm not funny but actually I, I was just funny <laughs> so yeah I'm enjoying that and I saw you kind of celebrating I wonder wonder what's going on for you Does that stir some celebration yes because I'm like, if people would know how funny you are, you know, like, you seem to be this kind of nice girl. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, like, yeah, I, it's like I want to be known. What I do most of the day with Nadine is play. Like, we don't <laughs> speak about serious things. It's like we, we are playing like two children, and this is how we spend most of our day. And I find you so funny. And, yeah, I'm, I, I'm celebrating it because I want it to be known. And also, I like when, I like when you feel self-confident a lot. How is that for you to hear? Yeah, I feel some, some vulnerability. <coughs> Actually, when you said, like, you seem like the nice girl, then immediately part of me gets shaken. Mm -hmm. Because I'm worried that people would think I'm fake or, or that people would not like me. And so there is this part inside of me that starts to tremble. And then what you say about that I like when you feel self-confident, it kind of like brings that pain of how I somehow lost a bit of my spontaneous expression of life just bubbling through me, like when that I had when I was a child. And maybe, maybe that's why I'm also enjoying too. When we're together, we can just play. Yeah. Hmm. How's that for you to hear? I'm, I'm touched and there was kind of one moment of fear hmm. that, that people will think I hurt her by saying that she's a nice girl. And actually, inside of me, I'm celebrating yeah, that I speak clumsily and it steers also pain, but it's for me, it's a beautiful pain. Mm. Is it? Yeah, very much. Mm. Can I share something else that came up? I also had some amusement when you said, like, I'm, I was w worried that people think I'd hurt her. And the amusement was more about, like, wow, that thought didn't cross my mind at all. But to see like how random kind of like the thoughts are also in my mind about certain fears that I have and for someone else maybe it's not at all there. So and some I have I'm touching compassion for all the stories mm -hmm. that so easily pop up and Yeah. <coughs> now I start to worry a bit about engagement and I wonder if it's maybe enough. What do you think? I have a thought it's enough. Mm. Shall we check with them? Yeah. <laughs>
Does that offer clarity? <laughs> Any reaction before going to play? I'm curious in um, my memory in, in the exact words are the best, but when you said um, it shook some fear in you in some, some sadness, I was curious M my immediate reaction is is to like when someone says, you know, what you said uh, made me feel uncomfortable. And my immediate act reaction, or my sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I feel like this, and then my immediate reaction is, no, you're not like this. So I was curious how. Was it for you responding with not saying either of those things and instead saying, I felt celebration in what happened for you? Uh, you wonder why I didn't say sorry? Is because I want, I want to give her the space to feel the feeling that is there. And if I say sorry, it's almost like shutting it down and give her the job to forgive me instead of me actually taking in. I if there is really hurt, I want to take in how my action has affected her instead of just saying sorry. Sorry, it's kind of too easy. Like I remember seeing like Marshall, uh, hearing Marshall supporting uh, a dialogue between women who got raped and the raper. Mm -hmm. And as the woman started to speak, the guy was saying, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm a horrible person. And then Marshall told him, no, no, that's too easy. You know, to say sorry, that's too easy. Like, I want you to suffer. <laughs> I want you to take in how your action has affected her back then and uh, how it has affected her since. I want you to empathize with her. Does that speak to you? Like, for example, one of the first things was mine and Courtney's interaction, where uh, I said I wasn't very good at communicating, and she said, I find you very good at communicating. Mm -hmm. and, and we understood the need from that. But what, in that instance, say I was having a dialogue between me and you, and I said, I'm not very good at communicating. What do you reckon your response would be? I have two choices. Or to continue hearing more about it. Mm -hmm. You know, wow, is it painful for you? Is it that you so want to learn? Just to be with you. And, you know, pain is there to serve life. So to allow the pain to serve life or to reveal to you what is going on in me. Which is, for example, to say, wow, it's really, when I hear you saying it, there is pain rising in me. Because, you know, I have a dream that you will see how I see you. Because I'm just so admiring you. And I'm confused of how come that you see yourself so differently than how I see you. <laughs> how is that for you to hear? <laughs> There is a movement of love that wants to happen. Thank you. If you would have said sorry, would that also be a uh, place that you take responsibility? Or that, you, that you feel like, oh, I did something wrong? Is, is that also a reason to not say sorry? Uh, especially the second part, that for me, sorry is actually it's a jackal word. It means I did something wrong. Right. And Is it always that though? Because I think <coughs> pain is like two sorry. Yes. The other sorry is a regret. Yeah. I feel regret. And regret is it to regret my strategy. Yeah. But still, to be very clear, I was doing it. In, it was an attempt to meet beautiful needs. But now I realize how it didn't meet needs. And I mourn it. Regret is a mourning. 
Are you speaking about that one? No, I'm talking about um, just feeling sorry for someone else's experience. I guess it's like sympathy. Ah. So like, I'm sorry that you're feeling this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, actually, that's a very confusing message. Mm -hmm. Because I want just more details. When you say, I'm sorry that, that I feel, what is actually going on in you? What is, I'm sorry, is it that you feel sad? Is it it's like if I'm, if I'm touched by someone else feeling hurt, I like to share that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm sorry that you're feeling that. Mm -hmm. ah, so are you touched? Yeah. You're touched to hear my pain? Yeah. And there is kind of a movement of care in you? Mm -hmm. Now I can take it in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that would be like, <coughs> uh, I guess another way that people communicate. For me, the importance in hearing that it's yours, that you are touched and that there is a movement of care, it's easier for me to, care, to take it in because when you say, at least for me, when you say, oh, I'm sorry that you feel, <coughs> it's very confusing for me. It's, it gives me the movement of shutting down my emotions. You know, if there is pain in me, I want it to be celebrated, mm -hmm. that there is space for it, for my pain to do what it is there to do. Yes. I think Rob was saying it this morning of like, yeah, but how to not to take no personally. Mm. So one, one part of it is the clarity that, you know, if I say, hey, Rob, shall we go to the park? And he say no. Actually, he say no to the strategy. He say no to going to the park. He's not saying no to me. So, so I want to I want to lead this dialogue of how to hear and know, and then to start to to do that thing. How to stand very firmly for needs and be very flexible about the possible strategies that might come. I'm completely open for any possible strategies. I'm not even op I'm not even attached to meeting needs together. Even just to be attached that we should find a way to meet needs together is already limiting the possibilities. The world is an abundance of possibilities how to meet needs. The only thing I'm really attached to is to meet needs. So is there anyone who would enjoy to do, to do this dialogue? We will do about a fake situation. Or else that there is something real between us. But anybody would like to play? Celine? Well, there is something real. There is something real? Between you and me, cool, awesome. I mean, I don't know, I'm anticipating your son is going to go. Ah, okay. So maybe, maybe you want, you want me to come there? Or yes. Yeah. So, and so we will do it a bit slow because I will speak some principles on the way. That's fine. So, I don't know if, you, I guess you cannot see from <coughs> there. If you want, you might want to stand up to see it more clearly, but I put on the floor, so this is me. I have, basically in a dialogue, I have two options to make. Or, sorry, I will do it like this. Or to reveal my honesty, or to reveal her honesty. That's my only job as a human being. I, I'm not attached to solutions. The only thing is just to travel with her in authenticity. And each moment is or to reveal my authenticity or to reveal her authenticity. And I very clearly, I put it, so this is my expression, and I put it in front of her listening. And this is her expression, is in front of my listening. So the way we're going to do the dialogue is that uh, you wanted to express something to me? I already, I already made a request from you the last time we saw each other and you said... You so you are, now she's already expressing. So she is there. And whenever she is there, I'm here. What happens very often in normal life <coughs> is what I call a diagonal. 
She express, I express, she express, I express. Shall we do a little bit of that, of diagonal? Mm -hmm. Say something? Um, well, I already asked you something. And <coughs> you said that I didn't hear it. Well, I, I asked you before. And I don't remember. And when you said you would tell me. But why do you make me already responsible for your, for your thing? Mm -hmm. But you said that you would. I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. You did. I didn't. Well, I remember. <laughs> I didn't say that. If you remember, that's your problem. What do you want from me? <laughs> You're always blaming me for your um, weird memory. <laughs> this is ping pong. That's one of my definitions of conflict. Conflict is two human beings who are on expression at the same time. See, behind what I'm saying, actually, there is pain. And behind what she's saying, there is pain. Both of us want to be heard, but none of us listen. That this is basically most of the dialogues I see in the street or between people are diagonal. So if you just take this principle of, I call this principle, keep the parallel line. Keep the parallel line means, OK, we are all here. Now I listen to her. Or <laughs> and now both of us listen to me. And to keep that very clear, that actually this is a, it's a big movement. So now I'm speaking, she listens to me, now she does And how is that for you to hear? That's a huge movement in dialogue, that now we both shift the focus to her. Mm -hmm. To really separate it in time, to slow down the conversation. All right, so we start. And maybe I, I will just write the other principle and then we do it. The other principle is to separate between connection and, and new requests. First, I want to be sure that I really get her abstract need and that she gets my abstract need before any trying to solve, any trying to be creative. And then creativity becomes effortless. When I know the needs, images will start to come. So you wanted to, to tell me something? Yes. Um, because the last time I saw you, I told you I had a, a small dream. And you said you think about it and answer me on this weekend. And I think now you forget, but I'll remind you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I had a, a fantasy of mm, introducing you to my husband and maybe sharing a meal. Ah, yeah. It could be that. <laughs> 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 uh, and I was noticing myself today wondering, should I mention it to you again? And also not wanting to pressure you because I understand you facilitate it a lot and maybe you're tired and want to rest. And also, I want to get out of the habit of putting down my own dreams for what I worry about other people. Yeah. So I wanted to at least mention it to you. Yeah. And now I regret a little bit because people are watching. <laughs> 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 yeah, so is there kind of a bit of celebration in you for actually really standing for your dream mm -hmm. and not putting your need aside? Yeah, yeah and, and for me, I actually feel a little bit okay if you say no, because for me, it's so important that I didn't say, just do nothing. That I at least ask you, and now I asked you twice. <laughs> <laughs> and that to me is, is enough. And if you say yes, that would be even more wonderful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so you really want me to hear that there is zero demand in it, mm -hmm. that it's really open, and that there is even just already celebration that you are standing for your dream. Mm. Yeah. And also, th I might have some disappointment, you know? And that at the same time, I want that to be for me to handle and not for sure. Mm. And just to clarify, if you notice, so far, I'm not moving to expressing myself. Yeah. I'm just slowing down. Of course, there are a lot of things going on in me that I could already express. But I want to be sure that we are together. Mm. So I'm just slowing down. I'm just continue hearing her. I like sometimes to call it. Uh,
thinking. Mm -hmm. I wanted a different color. Like listen until the end of words. <coughs> Do you know this experience that you are in a conflict with someone and they say something and immediately you want to react? And that has a downside, because if you move to expressing yourself before they finish, they cannot listen to you, because they are still full of their thing. Mm -hmm. So there is something about that, is to slow down in order to gain a lot of time. Slowing down saves a lot of time. You know, just taking the time to hear her until the end, until she will beg me to say something. I'm not wi I will not move there until she will beg me to say something. <laughs> because I want, <laughs> I want that when, she when, when I start to express that she's really available. What did you say? I, no, I forgot already. Uh, okay, um, I forgot to. I, I said that it's okay for me if you say no, uh, mm. because I have the celebration of, of not giving up on the things that I want, which is something I want to change. And also, I want it to be okay if I am disappointed. Okay. But that it's not a pressure for you if I am disappointed. But yeah. more that it's just my mind be. Mm, so that it's allowed to feel disappointed. Yeah, that I'm allowed to, and that I don't have to hide if I'm feeling disappointed because I worry how it would be for you if you saw that. Yeah. Yeah. You so wish me to get that disappointment doesn't mean pressure at all. Yes, 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 because I can't, I don't have a poker face, so I know <laughs> it will show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of, you want me to prepare myself that, yeah, it's, there are likely to be disappointment, but to really stay clear with myself, that doesn't mean that I should. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. I really don't want you to do what I've asked from a should or have to, especially if you're tired. Yeah. And at the same time, I don't want to continue my habit of um, expecting you will say no and then not asking because I think it will say no. <coughs> I, I want to change that habit. By the way, just by staying there, you start to see that all what she say has nothing to do with me. She's starting to tell me about her, her life. And it's, it's become actually all what is starting to happen is just healing for her in kind of what is most precious to her, of not giving up her dreams, allowing herself to feel disappointment without that this become a pressure in any way. It's become all those conflicts are never, a, it's, see it seems as if uh, the conversation is about whether I will eat with her husband or not. But it's never about that. I don't know if you notice in the dialogue that you did before about empathizing with the no, that in a certain moment it's not anymore about what it seemed to be about at the beginning. It started to be about our life, our life project. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted it to be okay that I want things. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to be allowed to want things. Even if it doesn't happen, mm. I don't want to hide that I want them. Mm. Yeah, so to really allow yourself to want with all your body and heart, yeah. and not to make it small. Yeah, not to make me small. No. Mm. You see, she's like sharing with me her life, her life project. Mm. Mm. And it would be nice to have fun. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so you're still holding the request as, wow, it can be fun if it will happen. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I notice I have some tears here. Mm -hmm. um, and also I don't have more to say right now. Mm -hmm. Tears there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just kind of sadness that it's wanting to flow. Um, yeah, and a big pressure in my head. Uh, mm. yeah. But I don't have any words for what it is. Mm -hmm. 
the sensations, some pressure and some... Yeah. yeah. And also uh, wanting to do a good job for everybody watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some worry of, of wanting to, to do it well. Yeah, yeah. Because learning is really important to me and I want to support their learning. So a little bit of that here. Would you like to know if it serves their learning at this moment? Um, you know, I'm, I'm okay. okay. Yeah. I feel trust because their eye right contact is there. So. Mm. so, just to mark it, so just before she was sharing this, I thought maybe it's the end of words. Mm -hmm. I thought already to ask her, would you like to hear me? But I was kind of just giving one more moment of silence to see if there is, and suddenly there was actually something very important. <laughs> that is going on. But I imagine while she's speaking with me, she's constantly worried about, ooh, how... Mm -hmm. That's part of what's going on. And there is one kind of question that sometimes I use in order to check if it's the end of words or not, which goes like that. Is, is, there, m is there more you would like? You would like me to hear right now? No, I'm very curious about what's going on for you. Yeah. And you would like to know what's going on in me, or or if I would like to to come with your husband to to. Can I have both? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel finished with what I have to say right now. Well. <coughs> to your request, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's going on in me actually is that I'm worried that mm -hmm. I don't know your husband mm -hmm. and I'm so afraid that there will be kind of polite chit-chat mm -hmm. and that I will be bored yeah. and that I will be very uncomfortable because I really care for you mm -hmm. and I want it to be meaningful for you mm -hmm. and I'm afraid that at the end of the evening I will go home and I will have a sense, pfft, I wasted my evening. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a bit scary to say. Mm, you're worried how I'll react when you say that? Yeah, I'm afraid that you will take it as if your husband is boring or, well, I don't, know, I don't even know him. Mm -hmm. But I have so many of these kind of situations where I, you know, I'm, I'm invited to meet someone that I don't know and actually, I'm, it stays on a level that I'm not nourished. Mm -hmm. And you want to be nourished when you spend your evenings with people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to be nourished every second I live. <laughs> like every second I live that I'm, I'm not pretending. And I'm afraid that I will smile to your husband and I will do all sorts of like things in order to... Mm -hmm. And yeah, I will kind of put myself aside, my honesty. And you really want to be authentic. Yeah, and I'm really afraid that if I will be authentic, uh, you will regret to invite <laughs> me there. <laughs> because you care about me and you care about our connection. I, especially I care about our connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't like that such a dinner will result in a damage for that connection. Yeah. Then I prefer to do something else. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you're feeling protective of our connection. Yeah. Thank you for hearing that. Mm. Is there something else you want to say? Yeah, and also I look forward to be with Boopy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I look forward to, we were planning to go to an Indian restaurant that I really like. And also, I want to rest, like mm -hmm. to be sure. I'm when I meet people I don't know, mm -hmm. I'm feeling more anxious and nervous mm -hmm. because it takes time to create connection, mm -hmm. and I'm afraid it will be a bit of hard work for me. While uh, you know, I'm the whole day I'm kind of involved with the details of human beings, mm -hmm. and then I like at the end of the day that mm -hmm. I have something that is kind of my little muscles can relax and not, mm -hmm. not this tension of alertness of how to survive. Mm -hmm. 
Is it that after facilitating all day, you, you, you don't want the added pressure of a new person? You want to rest yes. with people you feel comfortable with already? Very much so, yeah. And that I kind of build already this space that I can really be honest and mm -hmm. take risks mm -hmm. and yeah. not worry that every word can be misunderstood. And mm -hmm. yeah, you really want to be able to relax when you have dinner tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? I'm kind of looking to see if there is disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hear how it is for me to hear you? Mm, I'm still enjoying that tension. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're checking to see if there's disappointment on the face? Yeah, not anymore. No. Now I'm coming just to enjoy that tension. Yeah, and, and I'm also scared that me saying no in any way will also damage the connection. That you will be disappointed that, th th kind of the my, my biggest fear is that you will have something around that your arm is not really open. Oh. Yeah. And you really want me to Yeah, he's speaking about openness, openness, mm -hmm. openness, but then he's not really open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there, there is kind of almost like anger, it's like, don't tell me how I should be open. I'm open in my way. Mm. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the because I can tell you fuck you and you are like... Mm. <laughs> 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 it's really fun. Like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, because it's like actually to say fuck you is not at all fuck you and I don't have any sexual images, by the way, coming <laughs> The fuck you, it means like, wow, I so want not to give up my needs. Yeah. So many times I give up my needs without almost noticing into politeness of fears and blah. Mm. Yeah. 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 You really want to stay with what's real for you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, now I'm becoming curious how it is for you to hear. <laughs> Would you like to hear how it is for me? Yeah. Um, um, let me check then, so I'm not making any promises. Hmm. I'm not feeling disappointed because um, when I asked you, it was like a month and a half ago, and I didn't know then that I would be this tired today. <laughs> so I'm actually a little relieved. Because <laughs> I really want to go home and sleep. <laughs> So I don't feel disappointed. Um, I also feel really grateful that you shared. Um, the main thing I heard you say was that you care about our my con connection with you. Yeah. And that mm, uh, contributes to my feeling connected with you. Mm -hmm. So I didn't hear anything but that you care about your connection with me and that also you care about rest and relaxing. And I also want to rest and relax tonight, so it's fine for me. Mm -hmm. Mostly, I feel um, gratitude because when I first told you this wish, I didn't expect that you would take it so seriously. And that you'd even consider, should I say yes or should I say no? And I just expected none of, nothing. And the fact that you're even taking the time to say this beautiful no, um, I actually feel cared for and supported and that I matter <coughs> to you. And that was something I didn't expect at all. So I feel very nourished and cared about. Mm. That's what's good. Mm. <coughs> now I'm wondering what to do. Yeah. Does, it, does it feel complete for you? Um, it personally feels complete for me, and the worrying part about their learning is wondering, am I supposed to do something else? Mm -hmm. Is there some other request thing I'm meant to do? Yeah, you want to know from Yoram in the sense of what he was kind of planning it You're Yoram, the facilitator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else to do? But personally, it feels complete. Mm -hmm. So you want to know if Yoram is facilitator, I miss anything? <laughs> yeah. No.
And what, but as Yoram is uh, Yoram the person, I'm still kind of like, hmm. Yeah. Will she, will I know in three weeks that actually she was really hurt? Uh -huh. mm. So, actually, what I would like is that in three weeks, okay. you write me an email to tell me if you realize later that actually there is hurt. So you're asking if I will, in three weeks, write you an email just to check how things are. Maybe it's a half yes now, and you want to check in three weeks' time. Yeah, especially if there is hurt, actually, yes. Hurt. I can do that. Yeah? I'll put a reminder in my phone. <laughs> so, and at the same time, I know on a very deep level, so is it that actually you're searching inspiration with how to inspire or your husband to touch the qualities that you so want to share with him? Mm -hmm. But actually it has nothing to do with your arm. So on the profound level I know it. And there is something I like to call sometimes uh, to mourn my favorite strategy. Like, yeah, I, I really want, you know, to, to have this dinner with your arm. And your arm is choosing not to. And there is, ouch. Mm -hmm. And I want to give space for, I so liked how Celine was saying, like, please give me the space to be disappointed, to mourn mm -hmm. that this beautiful image will never happen or will not happen this time. There is pain in it. And still the mourning is actually leading to the core of the need. I'm not giving up on the need. I mourn the strategy. Yeah. It's a little bit, uh, did you have this experience that you, you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you were really scared to lose them? Ever happened to you? And then you lost them. Mm -hmm. And then you met someone who is even better. <laughs> yeah. You had some time this experience? There is something of like, I'm so attached to this strategy, I, I think I will die if I will lose it. And then I lose it. And it asks some time of mourning, and, and suddenly life brings me something else that's even more nourishing. But that's in retrospective. Yes. But that's not at the, at the moment. Yes. And in the, in the moment there is mourning. Mm -hmm. But what is the need in that case? W what is my need of, uh, like, why I'm afraid to lose this person? Because with this person, I meet so many different needs that I'm scared that if he will not be there, I will, all these needs will not be met. There are so many needs that are being met in intimate relationship. And I actually felt more connection with Yoram after the no, um, whereas the dinner with the strategy for connection. <laughs> so I don't even need that anymore, and I don't even necessarily want it because I actually have a headache and would like to go home quickly. <laughs> 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 so, the way he responded to me met the need I was trying to meet mm -hmm. by asking him for dinner. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I really resonate with that, and I, I didn't have the words before, but it's so like mm, my whole being is like, yeah. When I watched the two of you and, and just took in the, your voices and the care that you mm -hmm. express for each other, <coughs> it's just so nourishing to me. It's so beautiful to watch and a world that I'd like to live in. And I have so much appreciation also for you, Celine, how you were starting things and saying like how you were holding your needs like with real utter importance to yourself to care for them and to bring your voice in and at the same time really wanting to hold it completely lightly on the level of strategy, mm -hmm. like for him to really feel free to choose for himself. I find it so wonderful and then also for you that you say like yeah I don't have a poker face so there might be some disappointment and mm -hmm. I also want to make sure that that you're not receiving it as I want to somehow you know pressure you into saying yes so I just find that awareness so wonderful and I notice inside of me it's like ah oh, it touches me so deeply because it gives me such a sense of safety in the connection to imagine you would talk to me like this, and so much freedom and openness and closeness. So I have so much appreciation for just witnessing how you were holding yourself in, and your arm in the connection. 
Th this really brings that, uh, yeah, now you gave me w the words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that for me, it's really actually precious to say fuck you. <laughs> because I'm, I'm so scared to be angry. And actually, I so long to be angry. Like really to allow my full body to be in full expression. And so often I'm small, smalling myself. And it's true what you say, it's like the, f the way how you were so clear about it, you're really, really, even if you're disappointed, you're still celebrating. That gave me the freedom to say fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and also when I say fuck you, I looked in your eyes and I really didn't see any misunderstanding of what I mean with it. So What do you do with that request? And it is an important request. It's something important to you. Yes. I want to be transparent about it. Say like, I'm going to ask you something. If you're going to say yes, you're going to pay for it. I'm going to be angry. Yes, you're going to admit. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I, I just want to, I want to be clear. I want to be clear. I'm in a, I'm in a demand energy now. So yeah, it's probably <coughs> challenging now for both of us. <laughs> Even just naming it is already diffusing something and create a sense of humanity and, and a sense of a team in it. Yeah, there, th that's the magic of actually whenever I reveal what is, is, things start to flow between us. The challenge is when I try to jump over what is. Yes. Then it creates weird stuff. Just something that you said has popped into my mind. So let's say you make a request of someone and you're pretty certain that they've given you a half yes. They would rather say no. Yeah. But they've said yes. Do you have any, how, any thoughts on how you deal with that? Yes, so, so how is it for you to receive a half yes? Are you feeling worried about it? Yeah. Then I don't want to jump over my first gate. Yeah. You know, when I hear you saying, you know, when I hear you say yes, and I hear a certain tone of voice coming with it, I feel worried. Because I really want to care for our relationship, that there is no payment for any of us. Mm -hmm. So would you be willing to double and triple check if there is any, actually a wish to say, to add a no to it? Thank you. It's a very intelligent agitation. So I want to let the agitation do what it is there to do. And I feel really, you know, I imagine myself asking something from you and I'm so scared because it's so important for me, you know, that we both feel free to be ourselves fully, that none of us needs to feel pressure. Would you like to hear my request and would you be willing to tell me if there is any glimpse of pressure in you after hearing it? Yeah, does that speak to... Oh, I so love the kind of the, the clarity and care in it. I, for me, it's, there is a healing experience in it. You know, like if somebody asks you, you know, I really would like that, you know, we go to the sea together. Is there any pressure in you already coming? Please tell me. That's so important for me to hear. I so want to clear our relationship from all being tain ta tainted with guilt, obligation, have-tos, pressure. I so want to clear that out. I want to create something else. First, I really want to hold the fear with a lot of compassion. Yeah. Not, I don't want to push myself. Mm. I'm afraid, no, I will be correct. This is kind of the culture I grew up. If you are afraid, be courageous, step over it. Yeah. Well, actually, fear is very intelligent. Mm. Fear, it means there is another need I want to take care of. For example, this classical thing is that, you see, fear is often, it's a sign of care. Let's say, for example, I have a scary message to tell you. And then I say to myself, okay, no, Yoram, be courageous. 
you know, step over your fear. For example, I don't know if you noticed when I spoke with uh, uh, Sanders. Sanders. Immediately when I noticed I fear, I said I'm afraid. Because fear, it's already show him that I care. Mm. Yeah. If I jump over the fear, he will not receive the care. Mm. See, fear is actually very intelligent. Mm. He said to, even to the boss to say, you know, there is something I want to speak with you and I'm very afraid to say it because it's really important for me, our collaboration. Mm. See, if I jump over this, the, 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 it's actually more dangerous for the manager to receive the message. I love fear. Fear is so d beautiful. Mm. Yeah, does that speak to, to something? It's actually worth exploring. Yeah. So. Thank you. Sometimes the image that I, I, I use in, it, in every dialogue, I, I, dialogue I call it waves. It's waves. And in these waves, you know, it's a little bit like I want to go into a castle. But you know the castles, the old castles, they are kind of gates that you need to pass through. And you know what happens if you try to jump over those gates? You know, the swords that are kind of... <laughs> yeah. For example, to, jump, to try to jump over the fear, to feel afraid and to say, no, I will be courageous. So yeah, I'm really irritated. <laughs> and you see, there is something weird. I say I'm irritated, but actually my body says something else. So I tried to jump over the first gate, and that immediately created distortion. Mm -hmm. The body is very intelligent. Your body <laughs> already knows how to collaborate with human beings. Mm. It's back again, like losing your authenticity. Yeah, yeah. Because then, uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Kind of moment by moment by moment by moment by moment. I would like to share <coughs> something around the fears, you know, and the gates that you are saying. In my experience, I started, and uh, someone gave me the book, Feel the Fear and Do It mm. Anyway. Mm. So very slowly, I've been overcoming all the gates. And yeah, jumping over them could have been very scary, and then you go back instead of going forward. However, by doing it slowly, I was afraid of heights, mm. and now I can say I'm not, and yeah. I even did a skydive. So <laughs> it took me steps, but feeling the fear, I think it's a good thing yeah. once you are to have the awareness that what Yeah, because the thing is that fear is based on a, on a story. Mm -hmm. See? And, and then I want to hold this story with compassion. This is what I hear you say. It's like, I don't want to push myself immediately. It's like, okay, I have this story and I really believe this somewhere deep in me. Because stories we developed already from very early experiences. Mm -hmm. So I want not to push myself, oh, it's just a story. Know, it's just my traumatic story, so just... No, it's a really, it's affecting my whole body, so I want to be slow. And then I want to check if my story is reality or not. And then I like what you do, it's a kind of like I'm checking, I'm putting myself a little bit, I feel the anxiety, and then I kind of, I notice, yeah, my stories, my stories, my stories, and my body is fully engaged. And then after I'm like, oh, my body learned that actually, Reality is different than my story. And kind of slowly my body learned that reality is more safe than what my story imagined. Thank you. Mm. I think it will help me if we take one concrete example. Yeah, we can take one of these, for example, like the one I would like to stop working so many hours on your computer. Yeah. So, a and your question is something about, I have a need, but it's very attached to that person. In this situation, I'm hearing, so I would like you to stop doing something because I have a need, for example, for connection and intimacy with you. Yeah. So the problem that I have is that I have a need for with you. Yes. And, and just to clarify really uh, at the very depth that the you, yeah. that's not the need. Yeah. So, so I long for connection and for intimacy. And you are my very favorite strategy for it. Yeah. And it's not very uh, romantic to say to your boyfriend, you know, you are just my favorite strategy for <laughs> to meet my need for intimacy. But it's true, actually. <laughs> and the confusion, I guess, is like, well, what do you do when it's so attached to, yeah. this is my favorite strategy? Yeah, so I really want 
to experience intimacy now or connection. And I give it to my partner as a gift. And the bastards say no. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do then? And in, in, in my understanding, like I understand this and I would be like, of course I can get intimacy and connection somewhere else. But I like the quality of this one. Yeah, so, so yeah, I, I really have a mourning because you know, it, with you it reached levels that I didn't find yet with other people. And it's so easy and safe and so I, I mourn that you are not available. I'm kind of cradling my need. I mourn. I so wish that you will say yes, and you say no. And the, for me, in this mourning process, the importance is that I mourn that, yeah, I cannot make people do what I wish them to do. It's just the more I try to make them do, the less they want to do. So I'm, so I'm, I, I do mourn that he's, he doesn't want it now. And in this morning, it brings me even closer to my need. Of like, I really love connection and intimacy. And, and actually, even already in the morning, I already feel connection and intimacy with myself. It's actually, it's, it starts to be everywhere, connection and intimacy. Like, I see the plant, and I'm, I see more the plant now. I'm already feeling more connection with the plant. So it's that the kind of the magic that actually in the morning, the, when I'm allowing myself to mourn, from there it starts to expand in every direction. How do you give up your needs then for a longer attention bowl? Because maybe mm -hmm. you have a need for intimacy right now, mm -hmm. but you also have a need to actually build a long-term thing with, mm. with, with, with somebody. So to find mm. that balance between, because you cannot say like, oh, you know, uh, I want to have intimacy now, okay, you, you're not available, I call somebody else, you know, uh, every other night, you know, uh, that, 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 that will not be very healthy for the uh, relationship either. So how, how, do you, how do you balance or how do you know when to give up a need or park your need or what? Yeah, yeah I want to kind of to do it in the dialogue, to check it. You see, I, I really don't want you to feel pressure that you have to be intimate with me. And at the same time, there is a huge need for intimacy that is living in me. And I don't know yet what to do with it. You know, part of me is saying, wow, maybe I will mourn that it's not with you and I will start to search other ways how to meet it. And at the same time, I'm worried about it. Because mm -hmm. I so love, in a way, what we are constructing here together. So I want to search with you. But how is that for you to hear already? Does that speak to your question? Yeah, a little bit? A little, bit? Yeah. <laughs> a little half yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is there more there that you would like? Yeah, I, I would be very worried that, that it would not be understood. Unless yeah. maybe I would request, like, or I would ask, so I have this need, when would you have time? Mm -hmm. uh, to be more specific about Yeah, I would like some clarity. Yeah. Do you have any, a sense of when will you have time to, to really be together? Because I don't want to put my need aside. I need some clarity so I know if I'm parking it, if I mourn it, if I'm... It will, the clarity will really help me navigate. Yeah? yeah? That was a fool, yes. <laughs> I like something also in what you say, which I call make my baby need safe. Is that, you know, for example, if I ask, you know, can you buy me an ice cream? And if somewhere my baby thinks that if they say no, my baby going to die, then there is a desperation in me. Mm -hmm. There is a demand energy. And from what I heard you say, it's like you already in a way prepared yourself few possible strategies before asking. So, okay, if they will say, no, I can still buy it for myself, or I can... And in that way, the baby need feel more safe, that, okay, if they say no, it doesn't mean my baby need will die. So the more I'm, in a way, I'm holding in me the possibility, there are more possibilities, the more I'm, I'm actually moving from demand energy. Thank you.
and it's really energetically you can feel it. Like there is this, you know, this kind of oomph. You know, you ask someone, "Hey, can you make me a tea?" And if they say no, there is, <laughs> and that's a demand energy. The, it's a certain urgency. <coughs> what do you mean? Baby need? Yeah, yeah. All, all my needs I see as babies. See, ba babies, all they know is or to celebrate or to cry. Like, I want to hold my baby needs with a lot of care. So you're seeing baby as a metaphor for your needs? I'm I'm Mama Bear who takes care of all my baby bears. Okay. Yeah. Can I be a friend of yours? So yeah, so would you be willing to you know to buy me a jacket? Um. Is it that you are uncomfortable with me saying would you be willing? I feel like I should say yes. Yeah. Thank you for <coughs> saying that. I'm <coughs> because I have a choice of willing, yes, and unwilling, no. And mm -hmm. unwilling is such a big thing that saying yes is it's easier. It's yeah, so is it like it, then it sounds like and it's not you are unwilling? No. And I'm given the choice of willing or unwilling. Yeah. Yeah, so what would be a language that would be easier for you to receive? Mm -hmm. If you said, oh, I would love to have a new jacket. Um, I'm not sure. I would love you to buy me this jacket. How is that for you? Like, I would love, my dream would be that you buy me this jacket, and I would love to hear all what comes in you when you hear me asking that. Okay, that gives me more space to, um, to say more. That gives me more space. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then would you be yeah. unwilling? Would you be willing? To yeah. Too yeah, I don't want to be unwilling. Because there is so much more richness of my inner experience. Mm. Thank you. Yeah? Does that, does that feel complete? Yeah. I, if you say, like, for example, how would that be for you? Mm. Would that bring a bit more space as well? Mm -hmm. How would that be? Yeah. And really, just as a principle, the reason why I did it as a dialogue is a little bit like what Celine was asking yesterday. Is that actually every person has different association with its word. So there is not nothing general. It's about it's all personal. So whenever people are irritated with how I speak, I want to do this dialogue of like, wow, thank you for letting me know. And then I search what works with that specific person. It's it's not with everyone. You know the way when we are doing the request, we are always asking in a question format. Would it be the same if I say in this case, oh, I'm really worried that you could fall and hurt yourself, I would invite you to jump on the ground. Doesn't have to be, would you be willing or would you yes. not go? Mm -hmm. Any language. At the end, at the end it, for me, it's really fuck language. I, I don't really care about language. Language for me is a mean to arrive to a certain quality of presence, like experience. At the end, it's about the experience. And like, like with Edita, it was so clear. Yeah, she will take this word differently, or like Celine yesterday. So I don't really care about language. I care about what works between us. Yeah. Can I, I, I mean, I have to say, I, you're really triggered for me when you said you don't care about language, because I actually think language is enormously important, and the subtlety 
But, but I heard you saying that language isn't important, but actually yeah. the words you use are so, so important. Yes. And so I, there's a bit of a disconnect between, or maybe a misunderstanding of what you said. Yeah. That language is so powerful. See, if I will tell you now, that was a stupid question. Do you feel the pain in your body? Yeah. It's amazing, you know, like, I can use words and it creates pain in her body. Like, words are so powerful. The choice of word I'm, I'm having, this is what I think I'm hearing you say, that language is so important. Like, which language I'm choosing is, you know, like Marshall used to say, it's words are windows or a wall. So maybe I mis misheard you then. I so you wonder, you wonder why I say fuck language? Yeah. Because at the end, what I care is about experience. Yes, but it is the windows to get in. Yes. So if you use the wrong language, you yeah. don't get in. You get a lot. So yeah. I think they're enormously important. Yeah. yeah, so I'm regretting my language. It brought a different understanding. Mm. Yeah. Because I'm, for me, language is so important. Yeah. We're on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> and you see, just to get this example, yeah. <coughs> when I say fuck language, for her, it was really horrible. Was there anyone that for you it was inspiring? And so it's like fuck language in that sense. That at the end, what I care is about the connection I have with you and the connection I have with them. That's what I really care about, the connection. And my whole life, I'm spending about the power of language. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's what I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, hmm. And the delicacy of it. I probably find it difficult if you're not <coughs> demanding or not blaming, and the other person is like, yeah, you are, definitely. You're yeah. blaming me, you know, it's like hearing with a jackal. Yeah. Shall we do this dialogue? So let's say that I'm really not demanding or not blaming, at least in my awareness. So, do you hear it as blaming? Yeah, it's offending me. Yeah. So, I so want to drop my giraffe ears to say, what the fuck? <laughs> Take responsibility for your thing. But that will, for the long term, will not actually meet my need. Like, why do I want to convince her that I'm not blaming? What is my need behind wanting to convince her that I'm not connection. connection, clarity? So look how normally I try to bring connection and clarity. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, you're just projecting the image of your father on me now. <laughs> this is how I learned to bring connection, clarity, understanding. <laughs> and I just see it's not efficient. So I just put my double giraffe ears to welcome. Yeah, so is it that you hear it as blaming? Yeah. Or, yeah. It really hurts, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so is it you don't want to be attacked? No. Mm. What you said, it really, it really hurts. <laughs> yeah, so it really hurts? Well, the way you say it. Yeah. So would you like me to say it differently? No, I don't want to be another person as better as you are. Say again? I just want you to be as you are. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so shall I try it again? And please lift your hand whenever you hear blame in my words. Then maybe I can translate it. Would that work for you? Mm. It's like cut. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, ah, yeah. then it's shame on me. Like, oh, did, mm. you know? Yeah. yeah, maybe. Maybe I got it wrong, <laughs> but it's oh, hard. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> now, now you blame yourself? If, if there's, <laughs> I can see that you were like, never got it wrong. Wow. But I can just continue and I'll say, no way. <laughs> <laughs> no way what? No way. I'm like, I, I could keep myself and strongly on the position like, yeah. you were blaming. Mm. And, and for me, really, I don't care if I was blaming or not. Mm. Because this has already happened. Like, what I care is what is going on between us now. Who cares about? So, yeah. So, 
I just care about now and the future. So yes, please, I, I like that you say it, you know, because my intention is not to blame. And sneakily, without noticing, I, I happen to blame. So please let me know each time you hear my words as blaming. Works for you? Yes. And now we are in connection and ready to continue. Can I just ask, um, so did you admit that you blamed, without like the perceived <coughs> blame? Let's do that. Let's do that part. So, is it that you would like me to admit that I was blaming? Uh, were you blaming? Is, so, so now she invites me really to move from empathy to expression. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just want to reveal whatever is there. So, yeah. Let me, let me check. Like what I remember myself saying is that, you know, that I really want our child to go to that school and that I was worried that you want him to go to that school. And I'm checking if there was any bit of like, I think you are stupid that I, that my choice is better or something like that. And yeah, there is something of, I think my choice is better. So yeah, thank you. There was maybe a bit of that in it. And I'm now I'm sad about it because I really want to really get. I'm sure there are reasons why you want him to go to that school. So I want to take longer time to really get it and take it to my heart. Shall we do that? <laughs> 